Hello again guys, so we're expecting to see patch notes for 1.12, the Monuments of Power update essentially, the pre-patch, the right before the expansion comes out, getting everything in. We're expecting only to see a couple of card changes, but there might be some other interesting information we should be taking in. So stick around, we'll have a chat about it, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the way I approach discussing Legends of Runeterra. Okay, so here we go, patch 1.12, notes, Monuments of Power. I can go ahead and read this if we like, we might just skip through it. I might read, maybe just the intro. The Call of the Mountain set continues with the new expansion, Monuments of Power. The expansion brings with it new champions and cards, but also new card type landmarks, as well as region road extensions, new personalization content, and much more. Try out landmarks in the new lab, a landmark occasion, or discover yourself what lies within Monuments of Power. So we get 40 collectible cards, including three champions. We know Shivana, Soraka, and Kench. We get landmarks and some other goodies. Seasonal tournaments. This is important, I think. As the lead developers Jeff Jew and Andrew Yip previewed at the start of the spoiler season for Monument of Power, this expansion also marks the debut of seasonal tournaments. Look for dedicated video and fac at 9 a.m. PT on October 15th. I keep my eyes out for that. I definitely want to be checking out this. All right, here we go. Genevieve getting a nerf. Four HP. So I think when she first come out, what was she? I remember she got a buff. From what I remember, I think she was a six mana four four. And then they made her a six mana five five, if I'm not mistaken. The trimming down her HP. I think that's a fantastic change. Genevieve have de has definitely been quite oppressive and its ability to trade off two units with one scout is very much what makes her a problem, I think. So this kind of narrows down the targets she can swing into. So I guess it's a fantastic change. The most relevant point is when she attacks twice, okay? So basically she can no longer take a super good value trade, especially if your opponent's tapped out of mana, you know they have no play. It won't be as easy now. Uh, obviously the cards here are a little bit glitched. Bastion is going to increase in the cost. Okay, I think that's respectable. I mean, I think I'd rather see Bastion do what it does right now at one more, at one minute more. I think I can get behind that. I don't think it's going to change a lot. I don't think every deck's going to run Bastion. Not that every deck was. The decks that were utilizing it very well was obviously, truly, only Lee Sin. And I think only Lee Sin can still get away with using it. I don't think it's going to be as easy to justify running it, multiple copies of it in other decks. I still think it's powerful enough to be considered always. It's a very big game changer. And uh, yeah, I think it mostly impacts Lee Sin. It's a reasonable change. I want to read what they said here. Overall, we're happy with last patch's adjustments to Bastion's functionality. I honestly didn't have much of a problem with it either. I, could, I just dealt with it. But it's currently just too efficient. It is. A cost increase should limit its most punishing uses, uh, cases and general make the card more fair to face. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, hush. Big one, big one, big one. Cost, three to two. Old text, we know. Silence a unit this round. Okay, so this is pretty much the expected change. A lot of people predicted exactly this and it is exactly that. Suddenly, hush becomes maybe a one of, maybe a two of still. It's definitely gonna have implications that we might not see straight away. But we'll slowly, through experience, start to notice the trend with Hush. I don't think it's going to be as worth running Hush a lot of the time. I think it's going to be like that 1 of or a 2 of at max. But it's just not going to... It's The meta's going to pretty much change because of this. Huge implications to the meta. We'll have to wait and see how it feels. Living Legends. Okay. Fill your hand with random fleeting celestial cards. Refill your mana gems to full. This no longer refills your spell mana. That's a reasonable change. Living Legends definitely felt quite oppressive in those. In any moment where Living Legends gets played and you're not dead, I think you're just generating some insane value. This is a pretty good tweak. This is pretty good. I think this is a fine change. I don't think it's going to impact you too much. And the decks that do get to play Living Legends will simply not blow out their opponents. We'll have to wait and see how this feels. We haven't really been seeing those late game invokes come down as much recently, but uh, going into the future, maybe they see this might be a necessary change. I think it's a pretty reasonable change. Obviously, it was a very powerful card. Uh, we're getting some labs. ARAM, personal, uh, personalization. Haunted grounds. Bit of the Halloween theme here. 
we can see the Halloween uh, card back there too. Guardians, we've got the Infernal Drake card backs. These card backs look pretty pog. Pretty big fan of the uh, Poro card back for the Halloween theme. That's pretty cool. Got some new emotes. Uh, hmm. The Aurelian Soul is pretty cool. I think it's a really friendly way to greet your friends. I think this provides, you know, kindness to the game and a little bit of BM if you like, only if you're playing an Aurelian Soul deck. Uh, the owner seems friendly. These are very friendly emotes. The Soraka is kind of just like, what? What do you mean? Uh, disappointment and Tom Kench is as cheeky as. Got some new bundles, deck bundles. Uh, we got the this little expansion pack, these little like decks they bring out with the expansions. But this time comes with a unique emote. That's kind of interesting for anybody who's trying to complete their emote collection. You might have to consider picking up the bundle, so it's a little bit awkward. Hmm. Maybe there's still a way to purchase this emote. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's pretty cool to give like unique emotes in a bundle like this. It incentivizes people to, you know, spend some money if they like. Expeditions, not much of an interest in. Our ranked rewards in the new season. And wow. These icons look fantastic. Why are they, why is the ordering off here though? Like why is the platinum one here? The masters one actually looks incredible. This is a fantastic masters emote. And like, look, I know like in the, in the past, everyone at these ranks got some pretty, like gold emote looked pretty pog. Now it feels kind of balanced. Like diamond actually looks like, you know, reasonable masters looks fantastic platinum's pretty cool gold's kind of starting to look as not as good this will incentivize some players who want to get a fantastic icon to maybe push a little bit harder i'm gonna be using this one this looks fantastic uh rank two rewards uh nothing changed nothing to notice here yeah just a standard reset uh miscellaneous lulu and lulu level 2 art update Cool. Deck builder updated to support landmarks. Okay. Okay. Nothing else. That should wrap up, you know, the patch 1.12 notes. As for the changes to the cards, I think most notably Bastion's going to be the biggest change. I think Genevieve is a pretty healthy change. Ush is a pretty big change too, sorry. Yeah, this should really set up for the release of the new cards. Uh, fresh, fresh ideas, and we're just not going to see Hush and Bastion run us over. Fantastic changes. Really exciting. Can't wait for the release. And yeah, it is what it is, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.